for what's up scrappy peeps it's Adele from Inky Quill and today I'm doing a scrap lift so this is something that is great to do if you're lacking in a bit of mojo you can scrap lift someone else but it's also fun to go through your own albums and see if there's um, a layout that you really love that you can take either the design elements or the color and uh, interpret it in a new way with new photos I've pulled out an old paper pad, uh, so that was, was that Flea Market, I think, by Crate Paper, and this paper is very orange, and I am not orange, I do not like orange that much, but you know what, let's double on the challenge, so I am scrap lifting uh, a page that I made quite a while, oh, last year maybe, started last year, and it had a bit of mixed media in the background and it also had two uh, four by six ish sized photos and so I had these two photos of uh, Archie and Aaron eating their morning wheat bix together and I couldn't pick which one I wanted to use because uh, in one of them they're just going about their business eating and then in the other photo I'm pretty sure they're looking yeah they're looking at each other and so whenever I have something like that which is a very similar photo um, but I can't pick which specific angle I just print both of them because the more the merrier and if you both photos bring you joy if you love both of them why not print both of them <laughs> and so I oh and there's Poppet and Frida in the background there um, and so I stuck them together and I matted them together and I talked about this last week uh, when I uploaded the video about group photos and I find just with let me know if you're the same if you scrap actually let me know what size you typically scrap that would be interesting uh, because I I have been doing a lot more 12 by 12 layouts recently um, but I think my, my heart still, I do love 9x12. I am getting a tiny bit sick of it. Gasp, I know. Not sick of it, I just need a bit of a change. So that's why I've been doing a lot of 12x12s uh, recently. I'm going through my painty box and this, this little scrumptious basket is just, I love it. I keep um, some of my inky printables in there that you saw. I keep uh, backgrounds that I've made on the jelly plate. Uh, I keep backgrounds that I've made for printables and then put the originals back in this box. It's got a little, it's a little hodgepodge of everything. And sometimes if I'm feeling not very motivated, I sometimes just like to rifle through this box and I might find a paper that I want to uh, work with and that can just inspire a whole, a whole page. Now for this one, I am using that white. It's actually a graph print. It's a bit hard to see on camera, uh, but I that is from, I think it's some packaging from some Pink Fresh stickers that I had. And I love to use packaging. Um, I've been using packaging in projects since I started scrapbooking because it's a, it's a nice way to, to recycle, but it's also a nice way to get more bang for your buck as well. Uh, and I'm using this this is jelly plate on a manila folder and it's very orange uh, which is why it has been sitting in my uh, painted box for over a year or almost a year I think and I thought it was the perfect time uh, to do that because if we're going a little bit orange let's just jump all in and just cover ourselves in, <laughs> in orange because uh, yeah, what better way to to add to the challenge of not doing something subtly that you struggle with, but just really, really doing it. Uh, and I, you did see I cut out the centre of that uh, painted paper. Why I don't know, but I, I well, I, I usually cut out the centre when I want to use a uh, type of paper again. I don't know if I want to use this orange again, uh, so. <laughs> we will see how if it gets used but it's it's there for a future project if I if I want to I'm going through my stencil book and I do have a video on my patreon about um, how I organize my stencils and why I do it this way and uh, what categories I use and why I use different colored bits of paper uh, if you want more information on that and I was trying to pick a stencil that was 
a basic shape uh, so that it didn't compete with that geometric background too much because I, I have been doing this a lot recently uh, and you would have seen a similar technique on the wonderful ultrasound photo uh, the title's wonderful it's not, it's a it's an ultrasound <laughs> last week I uploaded and I did a similar thing where I used white gesso instead of white acrylic paint it's the same same kind of ish thing in this in this sense it is uh, and I wanted to just add a little bit of something to the background without it being too full force. I think if I had done this in, say, an orange acrylic paint, it would have just been too overwhelming. Um, someone else could probably get away with doing it and it would look lovely, but for my eyes, it would have been too orange and I probably would have abandoned the project a little bit. <laughs> um, but I'm trying to, I'm looking at the previous layout that I am scrap lifting and I do show you them side by side at the end of this video and I am trying to see where I had stenciling uh, on that page and of course you don't have to when you are scrap lifting um, it's, it's essentially like copying the uh, layout of a, another layout and you don't have to copy it to you know an absolute T uh, but you can, and you can adapt it. It's, it's your page. You can do whatever you like with it. Um, but I wanted to show how I was adapting it as closely as possible. So I'm using some white texture paste and this stencil, the first stencil, I think could have been an older Teresa Collins one that I got several years ago in a pack of stencils. Um, but circles are something you can find lots of circle, circle stencils everywhere and this uh, kiss hug one is by flutter by designs and it's really nice and thick and chunky so when you put uh, texture paste through it it's it, you can really see the texture paste uh, which I, I love that that look so then I struggled a bit with alphas and I did have to pause the video uh, while I went searching because these these photos were quite busy in the background in that uh, it's our back deck and there's colors and there's fly screen patterns and there's there's just a lot happening and I didn't want to just use black thickers for both words um, and then I run into Aaron's shirt here and you can you can see it better in person it's a different type of black um, but on camera it's it's a bit hard to see uh, so I settled with brown and black, which is not a color combination I typically do. I think because in the early 2000s, I wore a lot of brown and black together. Um, my favorite outfit by far, I had these brown cargo pants and they were like a chocolate brown. And then I had a black shirt with, would you believe it? Maybe this is why I don't like it, but I had this, it had this orange um, kind of like a dream catcher design on the front of it so brown black and orange it was a, it was a look it was a definite look uh, so I don't typically put brown and black together a lot anymore I think because it just makes me think of my 13 14 year old wardrobe um, and but it, it worked in this photo just because Aaron is wearing brown and black in this photo uh, and I, I was excited that I was able to use that little uh, teacup sticker. I, I, I do struggle with tea and coffee stickers. Uh, I'm not a coffee drinker and I, I've never drunk a cup of coffee in my entire life. The smell of it alone just, ugh, I, I can't do it. Uh, are you a coffee drinker? Do you need coffee in the morning to get you through the day? Aaron, if before coffee? Whew! you don't want to get on his cranky side like Archie sometimes does uh, Aaron is definitely a coffee lover I am not I like a cup of tea I have a cup of decaf tea sometimes in the in the evenings to settle down from the busy day um, but yes I do struggle with with cup stickers a lot so I thought being this our breakfast morning routine it was the perfect opportunity to put that on and then there were some tiny word stickers uh, from Ellie's studio that had the days of the week. And so I put um, the days of the week up there on the left-hand side. 
And then I tried to go for a bit of a triangle. It's a bit of a scalene triangle here. So you've got a really big cluster on the left hand side with the days of the week and that pinky sticker. And then it goes across to the title and then down to this little word sticker down the bottom and my journaling. Uh, and I, I like the little introduction. There's a bit of a subtle pale pink with that sticker on the left and then uh, on the right there's that thumbs up. And then in the, the reason why I went for the pink is in that background orange cardstock piece that I stuck down. Uh, it does have a touch of pink in it. So you've got three little spots of pink and I'm going through to add some wood veneer because I felt like I needed something to warm things up a little bit. Uh, and you can see my very technical glue uh, application process. My glue bottle was basically empty, so I put it on off to the side and then poked my awl tool into the, the top of it um, and was splodging the glue onto my wood veneer like that. Very, very technical. <laughs> um, but I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you're liking the Inky June Marathon. Uh, there's the original if you want a bit of a comparison as to how they look. Uh, let me know if you have ever scrap lift a page of your own and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!